Hello and welcome to the shop. If you follow my channel regularly, you probably recently watched a video where I made this blank. This is Inlace Acrylester. It is the money blank from Wood Turnings. And when I made this blank, I did not paint the inside of the blank simply because the blank looks so dense, even from the end, that I had no idea that when it was turned down that you would be able to see around the money, there'd be gaps and you'd be able to see the tube. Because I could see so much of the tube, I wasn't overly happy with the blank. I posted photos of it out on Instagram and my Facebook page as well as uh, my second channel. And I got a lot of responses from people saying, I think the gold or, of the brass tube looks really good with the money. You should go ahead and make a pin out of it. I still wasn't 100% sold, but I got an idea. I still have the other half of that blank. I swung by the hobby store and picked up some green paint. A buddy of mine, tomorrow at club, is bringing me a 2764 cents tube, which is the exact size we need. I'm going to remake this blank with a painted tube. In this video, what we're going to do at the end is I'm going to ask you guys to take a look at them. I'm going to ask you to pick your favorite, and I'm going to press together the pin based on the popular vote. Now, I don't intend to go through the entire process because I just did a video. I've already got this one drilled out. What we'll do is I'll, I'll paint it, and if anything happens along the way, I have to do a repair or anything unusual, I'll do that. Otherwise, I look for this to be a relatively quick video. Uh, it, it's primarily just so we can compare. So I'll be back with you in a few minutes. We'll paint this, I'll get it turned, and then I'll let you guys choose which one you want me to make the pin from. I believe I mentioned earlier that I had already prepped this blank. It's already cut to length and it's been drilled out. So I just need to paint the inside of the blank. Uh, a lot of people paint the tubes, but what I found is when you get a blank that thins out like this one did to where you can see the tube, if you paint the tube, many times you can see the glue uh, that's adhering the tube to the blank. So I like to paint the inside of my tubes. I generally buy a color that is close to, it's never gonna be exact, I haven't been that lucky yet, but it's close to the color I'm of the blank, or I'll just use white. Now I've shook this paint up, but I'm gonna go ahead and stir it a little bit with this match, only because I just don't know how well I was able to shake it since it was a new jar. Now let me try to get some of the paint off of the match here so I can All right, I generally use Q-tips, and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put my finger over the bottom of the blank because I plan to put a lot of paint in here, and I don't mind if it runs down the inside of the tube or of the blank, but I would like to catch it at the bottom. There we go, let me flip it over. I'm gonna make sure we get a plenty of it in there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my finger for a second and I'm going to look down the inside of the tube or the blank and I don't see any areas that aren't painted, okay? And I guess it didn't do any good to put my finger over because now I've dripped it everywhere. <laughs> I'm just going to set it down. We're going to let it dry for a little bit and then we'll check it out and see if we think it needs a second coat of paint. I tried to be neat while painting that blank, but... Uh... Anytime you've got the camera on, you're trying to work around the camera, it, it's really tough. Uh, WD-40. This is what I'm going to use. You can see I've got paint on my hands. I tried wiping it off. I tried to use a little uh, denatured alcohol. That didn't work real well, but generally, this WD-40, if you just spray some on a rag, rub it on your hand, you can see it's coming off. And I'm going to go ahead and use it. I'll clean my hands up with it. The thumb is almost clean. I'll clean the rest of my fingers and then I'll use a little soap and water and uh, I'll be ready to uh, show my hands again without being covered in green paint. I let my blanks set overnight and the paint is good and dry. I don't know how well you can see into the tube, but it's, it's solid green all the way down through there. My buddy at Club came through with the tubes. They're 27 64 inch in diameter, but they were a tiny bit shorter. So I asked him if I could have two and he was kind enough to give me two, and I'll be able to piece those together to make this blank work. Now, one thing I wanted to do before I attempt to 
make this pin or glue this pin up is put the put the tube in. Now you notice the tube goes in this far and it stops. That tells me I've probably got like a little run in there of paint and it won't go in this end. So what I've done is I went and got one of my punches and I'll have to re-roll this because it got a little loose and I've got some 240 sandpaper and I'm just, this punch is substantially smaller than uh, 2764 and whoops, everything's going to roll off the, off the cardboard here. And I'm just going to go down into the blank. I'm just going to sand. I don't want to sand aggressively. I just want to sand lightly just to take any imperfections out of the paint. And then we'll test again. Whoops. Let me move those things aside. My cardboard's got a bit of a crown in it. I'm still a little shy on that side. It's going to go a little farther this way, so I'm making progress. But I'm just going to continue to, to sand around the inside of this tube a little bit at a time. This will also help with the sandpaper. Uh, this will also rough up the paint, which should help the glue adhere to the tube. We're a little better there. And I'm not sure, I'm, I'm being very careful with this. I'm not, I'm not trying to get in a hurry. And I'm just gonna kinda, I'm gonna work the blank around a little bit. You can see the green dust coming off on my hands and on the sandpaper. So we are making headway. It's just a very, very slow process. Almost, almost. What's this side here? Yeah, th see this one's gonna go on down in there, I think. And let me get the, there we go, push it out. I still think, and I'm trying to use my light to find it. Let me re-roll this the opposite direction. I still think I've got a bit of instruction there, and probably what it boils down to is I put the paint in pretty thick with the Q-tip, and on one side there probably was a run, and that run is what's causing the issue. Oops. Okay, this is kind of boring, so I'm gonna shut the camera off, but I'm gonna continue this process. I'll rotate the sandpaper to keep a clean piece on the punch, and I'm gonna continue this process until this tube can freely slide into this blank. I'll come back and finish up uh, working with the blank once that happens. It took a couple more passes with the punch and the sandpaper, but you can see now the tube can go into the blank. It's a little tight, but the CA glue will lubricate that and allow it to slide in easier. Now. Using the punch, I now have the interior of my tube roughed up, and you can see my, my brass tubes are roughed up. So I'm ready to go ahead and put this blank together. We're gonna to use just a little bit of medium CA. And what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna slide it about halfway in, and the reason why is I want the tubes to meet about in the middle, and I'll just trim them off. I don't want the, the connection between the two tubes to be towards the end of the blank where it could be a weaker connection. Get a little bit more of that CA there. Okay. Okay, and the tubes have met. There we go, there we go, I'm pushing them back and forth. Okay, I'm gonna leave this to dry naturally. No accelerator, no activator. It's just gonna sit here and dry. Then we'll come back, we'll clean it up, and we'll uh, prepare to turn it. With the glue completely dry, I need to turn my attention to sizing this blank to what a normal tube size would be for this pen. And as I lay the other blank right up on top of it, you can see that there's maybe only a quarter of an inch difference. So I'm not gonna get aggressive with the bandsaw. What I'm gonna do is just simply nick these two tubes off, and then we'll take this to the sanding jig and we'll take turns alternating side to side and just sanding down a tiny bit of material until it is exactly the same length as this one. Using the bandsaw to cut the brass tubes does create a rough edge. You can see the burrs in there and how rough that tube looks on both ends. But if we sand this from end to end, we're gonna take that down. We're gonna get back to the normal part of the tube and that's gonna be a non-issue. And the idea here is, once again, we're just going to sand it until it reaches the same exact length as the original tube.
with my blank. Now sand it down to proper length. I'm ready to go ahead and take it to the lathe. You can see that the sander did a really nice job of cleaning up the tubes where I cut them off. I'm not going to film the turning of this blank because we just saw it in the previous video unless there is an issue. If there is any issue whatsoever with this blank when turned, I will put the camera on and film that and show you what I did to correct the issue if possible. As I was sliding this blank onto the mandrel, something occurred to me and that is the last time I turned this blank, I rounded the corners over on the belt sander. I'm not going to film that, but I'm going to go ahead and round it over and I'll come back and give you a quick peek at it right before I put it on the lathe. Here's the quick peek I promised. Now, obviously I didn't do a very good job of rounding it. You can see I'm, I'm a little bit off center. That shouldn't hurt anything. As long as I don't have those sharp edges to catch on, I should be able to very carefully take my tool and work this blank back into round. I finished turning my blank. It was relatively uneventful, thank goodness. I'm at the point now where I'm ready to begin micro meshing the blank and I'm going to treat this just like I did the last one. We're going to go through the micro mesh and once I get done micro meshing, I'm going to put my buffing wheel on and we're going to buff it down and we'll be finished at that point. I'll come back and show you what it looks like compared to the original blank. Here's a quick peek at both of my blanks. The one on the left is the first one I did with no paint and you can see some of the brass tube shining through. I've had a number of people tell me that that kind of looks like gold and gold and green of money go well together. The one on the right is a painted tube and I think the green paint makes it look like the uh, there's more money packed into the blank. Uh, on the tubes I had one flaw that was an air bubble here and uh, I'll, I'll put the clip right here to hide that if I use this blank. And on this tube there was one flaw there and all I can figure is I must not have got complete coverage when I painted the inside of the tube or I must have scraped it with the edge of the tube when I inserted it into the blank because I lost a little bit of a little bit of color right there but I can put the clip right there and hide that and both of these should look really amazing in a pin kit. I'm very happy with how they turned out. I'd like to thank you for following along with me. This was this was a fun little turn for me. Uh, I liked making both of the blanks. I think they really both look incredible. Uh, what I would like to do is ask a small favor of you. I would like for each of you to go down in the comments and comment on which blank you like better. No paint or paint. I'm going to let the comments go until Wednesday of this week and then I'm going to look in there Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday evening and I'm going to find which blank got the most votes. And I'm going to press that into a Palisades pin kit. So we're going to actually finish this pin but you guys get to tell me which blank is the winner. Once again, thanks for following along. I really appreciate it. I, I, I love doing these videos. I love sharing them with you. I love the interactions that we have. And I appreciate each and every one of you for following along, commenting, liking. It, it all helps and it keeps me motivated to continue to bring you more videos. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Take care, everybody, and have a great evening.